Welcome everyone to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, also known as Wolf, and I have a show for you tonight. And before before we get started, though, I wanted to let everybody know um, it's it's Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. Josh Turner at PRTPodcast.com. That's the that's the uh, what you need to get in touch with me. Or you can send me a friend request on Facebook, like I've said before. Just please let me know that you are a listener of Paranormal Roundtable. And so then I can approve you because if not, I'm not going to approve your friend request. I'm also Josh Turner 940 on Instagram. You can follow me and and whatever ridiculous goofy pictures I put up there. I don't know what we're doing on Instagram. We're just putting pictures up, I guess, right? So <laughs> that being said, my co-host tonight is Barton Nunley, okay? Because we are going to be doing a series of discussions with with various people in the Bigfoot Dogman uh, c- community, and so. Tonight we're going to have our guest is going to be Bigfoot Michigan Rob. Also, I call him Michigan Rob. That's what he's on my phone as is Michigan Rob, and uh, he has a show that he does, and um, we're hoping that um, you'll enjoy what he has to say today, and or maybe you won't. If you don't, maybe you maybe you don't like it. Maybe, you, but it's too bad. You're going to have to listen to it anyway. You're stuck. You're stuck here. And if you do leave um, without our permission, well, you know what? You never know what could happen. Bigfoot could come after you. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, so Rob, are you there? Yeah, buddy. I'm here, Josh. Thanks for having me on, man. Yeah, absolutely. I've been wanting to do this for a while. And Barton, everybody knows who Barton is. And for those who are not, you know, the uninitiated, uh, Rob, introduce yourself to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, my name's, I'm Rob. Um, most people know me as Bigfoot Michigan Rob or BMR. I've, um, you know, I'm on a, I have my own YouTube channel called uh, Bigfoot Mission Rob and for about a year and a half. And I've been with Tex, my buddy, good buddy, Big Tex. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's got a show. I'm a, we have five shows, basically, and I, I work with Tex on Texas Front Porch and Bigfoot Mission Rob show. And we got together, um, I've known Tex for about four years, and we got together, collaborated on some shows over the last year and a half, almost going on two years. And. And, uh, it's been it's been a quite the run, quite the run, and uh, you know I got involved with this, and we'll get into it a little bit here in a little bit. I don't normally go by Bigfoot Michigan Rock. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> that kind of was uh, you know Josh and Barton. That kind of was it just it just happened. It just kind of happened. Well, Barton, Barton, well, it's a good ba- name. Barton doesn't go by Barton Nunley. He goes by Bart Black Bart. Like yeah, the, yeah, you go. Black Bart. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. that. My friends call yeah. me Black Bart. <laughs> Black, they don't. <laughs> okay. No, you know, I was on the phone with Barton and, and uh, Lyle Blackburn, and they were talking about their names. And Barton didn't correct me if I'm wrong. Y'all's names came from like bad guys in old westerns, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So I was named after Barton McLean, who is an actor that played strictly bad guys in. Uh, the fifties and sixties westerns, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, and so, <laughs> so we can call you Barton. We'll just call you Black Bart, and we'll call. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and we, and we, and so, so Rob, do you do you mind us calling you Michigan Rob, or do you just want us to call you Big Rob, or what do you want to call? To you no, know, you can call me. Hey, Michigan Rob is fine. Um, no, yeah, that's great. You know, people, Rob, Michigan Rob, BMR, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm, I'm fine with everything. Yeah, I. Uh, you know, when we're doing, like, I guess for marketing purposes, you know, you can always throw in the Bigfoot or the BMR, or, but Michigan Rob is fine. And it's kind of interesting, you guys. It says Bigfoot Michigan Rob kind of happened kind of on accident. And before I get into my encounter, uh, I had an encounter in, in uh, 20, June of 2018. And before I get into the encounter, what I did was it was quite – Quite traumatic, and and I never use YouTube for watching videos. I use YouTube to watch like concerts. If I had a party, I throw on YouTube and throw on a live concert from you know some old band. I never use YouTube to how to change a flat tire or how to look up something. I never used it for educational purposes. It was just kind of entertainment. And uh, so one day though, man, I had my encounter and I had to. I had to tell my story and I had nobody, nobody believed in Bigfoot that I was aware of 
Uh, nobody was into what happened to me. I always liked monsters and stuff growing up as a kid, but when I had this encounter, I needed an outlet. So I, you know, again, being a dummy, wow, you can make videos on YouTube personally, you know? And so I, I got back to my laptop and I started talking about my encounter. And then I find out, well, you just don't publish it. You got to come up with a handle. So I'm like, well, hell, what do I call myself? I said, well, my name's Rob. I live in Michigan. I saw a Bigfoot. Bigfoot Michigan Rob was born, right? And so I use that as my, my calling card on YouTube. And now it's stuck. Now I have a show. Now my channel is Bigfoot Michigan Rob. My show is Brunch with Bigfoot Michigan Rob. So, and people know me. In fact, about six months ago, Josh and Martin, I, I put a poll out to my audience. I'm thinking about dropping the Bigfoot Michigan Rob thing and going with something different. An overwhelming 90% said, you better not change it. We like the name. So I'm not getting rid of it. It's, it's sticking with us. Well, Looks I mean, like you're stuck with it. Yeah, it's, it sounds better than like, you know, alligator Rob or <laughs> kangaroo <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rob, you know, because you know, it, it just fits. Yeah, it, does, it does kind of flow. And so the acronym BMR, people dig that too. So I I, I got merchandise with BMR on it, Bigfoot Michigan Rob, blah, blah, blah. And, so, yeah, so I like it. You know, it's growing on me. People, more importantly, the people that I talk to on a daily basis, people love it. So that that works for me. Here's a funny thing. Yeah. You, you, you got me in touch with Tex and Jason. Like, I met them at the Mineola Bigfoot Conference earlier this year, yeah. uh, back in the spring, in the middle of spring. But I remember you, you're the one that coordinated it. Like, you got the numbers and all that. And so yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know that I knew who you were, but I didn't know BMR was you for whatever reason. And yeah. I, I kept saying this boomer guy, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and Tex is so laid back. He goes, Oh, that's Rob. That's Michigan Rob. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Cause yeah. I was like, who's boomer. I'm like, who's the boomer BMR. Oh. And then he goes, boomer, Oh, that's yeah. Rob. I said, Oh, that's Rob. Okay. That now, now it makes sense. Uh, you know? Yeah, okay, boomer, yeah. I can see tech. Yeah. Brian, yeah. I, I thought it was a seventies rock band. <laughs> VMR, what is it? Boomer? And they're like yeah. it's like R R K, right? Like R isn't it? That's the initials. Well my name is yeah, my 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 Robert and my last name starts with a K, so I'm R K, yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm hmm yeah. So, yeah. We, so and the other thing I was gonna tell you, like it, it, and I did interview Tex. And me and Tex, and, and, and then, of course, I was on the show on Texas, Texas Front Porch with him and Jason. And then we I've had Jessica Jones on the live stream, which, by the way, folks, if you don't check out, if you're not checking out the live stream, you're missing out. Every Tuesday, I do a live stream on YouTube. It's a YouTube exclusive. It doesn't get dropped on all the other platforms. It's just YouTube. So check that out. I'm always on there with different guests. Um I've already lined up another two or three uh, guests for the next for the coming weeks, and I will be at the Texas. <clears throat> actually, me and Barton will, will both be there along with uh, our our uh, colleagues. Uh, Rob, you're going to be there, right, with Tex at the Bigfoot Conference, yeah. the Texas Bigfoot Conference yep. in Jefferson. Yeah, Craig Woolheater. Um, I just talked to Craig last night on the phone. So, yeah, and I'm a sponsor of the of the Texas Bigfoot Conference. So. <clears throat> Be sure and check that out, folks. If you can make it down to Jefferson, it's a big conference. It usually happens there every year in Texas. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing all you guys. And Barton will be in attendance there. Barton doesn't go to many conferences. I got him to go to my Dogman conference. We had a blast. And he's going to be showing up for the, the Texas Bigfoot conference. So just had to plug right. that real looking quick. Looking forward to it, actually. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to meeting my uh, lifetime idols. Ken Gerhard and Lyle Blackburn. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to meet those two, and you know, uh, it's gonna be like. A, well, I think I think you I think you've met them multiple times, but that's cool. If you want to meet them again, <laughs> um, you know. No, and, I'm actually looking forward to meeting Lauren Coleman. Uh, I believe he's going to be there as well, and that's that's going to be the highlight of my of my visit there. I don't know if no, I, I can't say for sure because Craig didn't know for sure if Lauren was going to be able to make it. So yeah, I don't oh, know. Oh, I think. Yeah, so he, I don't know if he's going to make it or not. I think he if he doesn't go, he's going to do a presentation by Zoom. But, uh, yeah. Oh. You know. yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, never mind then. 
Rob, do you have any groups or anything you want to throw out there real quick for the audience? Oh, I'm not, I mean, groups, no, I mean, uh, on YouTube, well, on YouTube, again, Bigfoot Mr. Robson channel. I'm on Twitter at uh, Rob underscore, it's actually real easy, at Rob underscore Bigfoot. On Instagram, it's Bigfoot Mystery and Rob. And, uh, yeah, so you get a hold of me on the Facebook. At, it's called Brunch with Bigfoot Mystery and Rob. That's my group. Okay. My Facebook name is uh, Incognito because I only use it for Bigfoot people, not like friends and relatives. So I'm really, they're technically my friends, but if they're not Bigfoot people, then I don't really, I don't use it. I don't, I'm not a Facebook guy. I use it just for advertising. Yeah. So Brunch with Bigfoot, Mr. Rob is the group on Facebook. And then I can get you my, uh, my actual personal one if, if people want, want that as well. Yeah, and and Barton, you have a group. It's in Humanoids with Barton Nunley, and, and when you took that over, it was Paranormal Encounters, and you know, and Tony Mushu yeah. was doing nothing with it, and he's like, I, ah, I don't, I'm not doing anything with it. And Barton took it, and overnight, it it got like a thousand more people in it. It was pretty quick. So that group is is growing That's by leaps and bounds. Great group of people. Yeah. Oh yeah, good you group. Know, people. Really, really appreciate you. Let me take that over. Yeah, Josh and you and Nelly, and it's a really smart and intelligent free drinking free thinking group of people so yeah it's a pleasure and honor to uh to be there with everybody mm -hmm. and and yeah. rob i want to say before we before we get into this really quickly um and this is it and we'll start talking about your encounter but rob and tex and jason and jessica they're they're really good people and i've, ta I've talked to all of you guys for for periods of time and um, I think you guys are doing great work and, you know, I think you're up and coming and I think you're going to, you're going to be big. And I think that you guys are on the right path. Um, you have integrity as far as I can tell, you know, and, and you're pretty honest and you, you shoot straight, you know, and that's what we need are good people if, that in this community that, that are up and up and up and willing to talk about some of the uncomfortable things, uh, that, that, that come along with these encounters. And now Jason, um, and Tex and Jessica, they all do. They all do all this. They research, and Jessica does the remote viewing. Um, but you had an encounter with something that I I want my listeners to hear, because there is this misconception to me in this community that oh these things won't hurt you, everything's fine. And, you, know, you can leave them cookies and apples, and they'll sing kumbaya and be your friend, and you can go on road trips with them. And it's not that's not the case. And I've told people that before. And so, Rob, your encounter speaks volumes. So, if you, whenever you'd yeah. like, just let's get into it. Let's uh, talk about your encounter. Yeah, no, we'll get into it. And, you know, when I tell the encounter, like this, again, I, I'll never forget the date, Josh and, and Barton, because it was 2018, June 15th. You know, we all remember dates, so maybe the, your, your first born or the date you got married graduated college, whatever, right? Well, this day here is number one on my list. It's actually, there's number one A and one B, and I'll get to that here shortly. Um, it would be my kids, but, you know, when I got married in my early 20s, wife couldn't have kids. We since, you know, separated. And so I can't say my kids are number one with this date. So it's, it's, it's replaced with Bigfoot, I guess, you know. Um, but the thing is now, yeah, you know, I'm going to tell this story, how I told it in 2018 It's certainly over the last four years being involved with Tex and Jason and people in the community and my own personal research and study that I've done. Certainly my opinions changed, but I always like to be original with my story and tell it how I saw it unfold in 2018. So getting at it, June 15th, 2018, um, I took my girlfriend at the time, Cindy, to Cadillac, Michigan. It's uh, northwest in Michigan. It's maybe, it's right, it's above the middle of the state. It's right, it, it borders like Lake Michigan. If you go on Google Maps, you'll see Lake Cadillac, pretty sizable lake. And it's also attached to another lake called Lake Mitchell. And there's a, a canal that connects the two lakes together. 
my uh, girlfriend, Cindy, not a fisherman, not a hunter, not much of an outdoorsy girl at the time. Uh, I had to break her into this because, hey, I said, girl, you know, if we're going to be, you know, make make a run at this, I, you know, I, I'd like to do, doing outdoor, outdoor activities. So she says, yeah, okay, fine. So I get to uh, the Cadillac, Michigan, and I rent a small skiff, like a fishing boat. Not very big. It's big enough for me and her. You know, get a, put a cooler on there, some, some fishing tackle, and that's about it. So we start the day about 10 in the morning. Of course, I wanted to get up about 6 in the morning to go fishing, but, you know, the women, they like to sleep in. So 10 o'clock, we get on the water. So we're drifting along Cadillac. Now, Lake Cadillac, guys, is uh, surrounded by the, the forest, but Manish, the, the Manistee National Forest, excuse me, but there's a lot of buildup. There's a lot of homes around this lake. There's a lot of small businesses, some uh, shoreside restaurants and bars. So it's active. But the lake is huge. You can get out into the middle of the lake, and, and all these stores, they look minuscule. So nothing's going on on this lake. We're not getting even a bite. I can tell Cindy's getting bored. I said, well, let's just do some exploring. So. I take a little boat, we're driving around Lake Cadillac, and I come upon this canal. I said, wow, this looks pretty cool. Drove through this canal. And it was kind of one of those canals. It was like man-made. I could tell on either side of the canal, it was cement and steel. So it was built there. And it connects to the adjoining lake, Lake Cadillac, or excuse me, Lake Mitchell. This is off of Lake Cadillac. Now I'm proceeding onto Lake Mitchell. So I say to Cindy, I says, uh, wow, this is pretty cool. It's not as built up. Don't get me wrong. Yes, there were homes. Not as many businesses, but it was a little, the house is more spread out. You know, instead of having one house on top of each other, it would maybe be one house and then maybe 50 yards away another house. But certainly not as predominant as Big Lake Cadillac. So... I'm proceeding down southwest. Again, you can see all this on Google Maps. I, I go southwest to the very bottom of Lake Mitchell to uh, like a cove. So now I set up shop. I'm kind of drifting. I'm maybe 90 to 100 feet from shore, parallel to the shoreline. So now I told Cindy, I said, hey, I'm going to put together a fishing tackle. I'm going to redo all the bait and lures, so I'm working on that. And so at the time, Cindy, she's standing up at, to my right, looking into the wood line. The wood line dropped right into the water. There was like no sandy beach. There was no rocky area. It was like basically the woods. Then if you walked out of the woods, you would basically fall right into the lake. So there's no place where you could really, you know, put up a tent or, or, or get a sunbathing. There's no beach, nothing. So... As my head is down looking at the fishing tackle and I'm putting it together and Cindy says to me, Rod, I think somebody might be throwing rocks at the boat. I said, what? Rocks? I look up and again, as I explained, you know, there's nothing. I mean, there's nobody there. It's woods and water line. I said, well, yeah. I said, it's probably some fish jumping around. Look into the water. Maybe you'll catch some jumping. Okay, Rod. About 30 seconds later, hey, Rob, I just seen a rock. It landed in the water. As, as she's looking into the water, and I look up, look to the shoreline. I said, you know what, Cindy? Okay, just hang on a minute. I'm getting a little perturbed because I know no one's throwing rocks. And I'm guessing it's fish or something or some little critter, you know. Honey, let me get this together. Let me set up the fishing tackle, and then you and I can both see this together, experience whatever it is that you're seeing, someone throwing rocks. So sure enough, after I say that, I look down, but then for whatever reason, I happen to look up into the sky and I see some object falling from the sky. And I'm thinking, what the hell, is that a dead bird? Is that a bird falling? And then as I'm looking, it, you know, you guys, yeah, sure enough, man, it was a rock about the size of a baseball and it plopped probably four to six feet right in front of the boat and kerplunk, boom. I said, wow. 
So I looked at Cindy to give her her props and say, oh, yeah, there's somebody throwing rocks. So as I look at Cindy, you got to remember, this is June 15th. It's summertime. Now it's probably closer to noon now, you know, after we were out, out and about. She had a nice suntan. She was a little girl. She's about five foot, 110 pounds, head to toe, beautiful suntan, you know, and I see her body. I swear, you guys, the brown color of her skin and that face was drained of all the color. It was, it was white, ghostly white. So I looked to shore to see what the hell she's looking at. Standing there kind of with an arm draped around like a tree, leaning out is this reddish brown creature stood about nine foot tall, takes his arm around, unwraps his arm from around the tree, standing there right at the edge of the wood line, right in front of where the water comes up to it. Standing there, and I could tell this thing is tall. Like I said, I always say nine feet. Shaggy, reddish brown hair. His hand, his arms are at this time just set up on his side. It seems like his hands went down slightly past the knees. And I'm 90 feet away, so I'm getting a good look at this thing, guys. It, the front, the whole body, the hair was shaggy, yet the chest. It had a little hair. In fact, it was like a gray look. And this face had no hair on it either. And it was gray. And it was the weirdest looking face. It, it had offset eyes. It, one eye was like higher than the other eye. They weren't perpendicular. They were offset. And when I look at this thing, I immediately think, is that some whacked out person? Because the face looked human humanoid, then humanoid is what I see now, but it looked like a person with Down syndrome. I apologize to anybody that's listening that maybe you have somebody that suffers from that. I apologize, but that's what it looked like, and that's how I always describe it. Down syndrome looking person kind of just staring blankly at me, but yet he's covered in all this reddish brown hair, and it's like nine foot tall. And I'm just trying to figure out what what am I looking at? I look back at Cindy and, and she's not saying anything. She's like shocked. And I look back to shore and all of a sudden, as I stated, those arms are on its side, you know, draped on its side. Then he kind of lifts them parallel to the water. And I swear they seem to extend out 10 feet. I mean, they seem to be just as long as he was tall. And then it kind of huffs back arches back. Now his mouth, he drops. Now this Down syndrome looking face, man, the, the jaw like kind of just drops down six, seven, eight inches. Exposing, I could see two teeth on top. They reminded me of oversized like Doberman pincher size canine teeth. There were two teeth on the bottom were very close together, but more narrow and pointed. And he goes back in that gray, wrinkled, Down syndrome-looking face. All of a sudden, it rolls back really tight. The skin got tight, very taut. Again, the jaw is like in gaping, and the mouth seemed to extend from ear to ear. And his mouth reminded me of Pac-Man. Remember that video game? You know, and and all of a sudden. It's, it's, it's getting ready to roar or yell or something. And I always say what it does is it roars, screams, and yells all in unison with this big and gaping, wide open mouth. Mouth isn't moving, but there is this boom coming from the depths of its lungs. And I, again, as I stated, I'm 90 feet away. And it almost appeared as though there was a ripple effect in the water rushing up to my boat. Now, with this thunderous sound that it's emitting, Cindy and I, you know, I guess later we talked about infrasound. Again, back in 2018, I have no idea what the hell infrasound is. But I got hit with a, a boom. 
like a shockwave, like kind of ran, was running through my body. I took a stumble back a little bit. My girlfriend, Cindy, as I stated earlier, 110 pounds, man, she flips off the back of the boat. Again, it's not a very big boat. If the boat was eight inches out of the water from top of the shore to the top of the boat, that's how tall it was sitting in the water. She flips in the water. But the thing that was really crazy, you guys, when it does this roar, and I talk about the jaw dropping and the teeth and the tightening of the skin, it did not any longer look like a, a Down syndrome person. And I always say this, it looked like the devil. It looked like a demon. It looked like something from a Marvel comic, comic book. It looked, it was night and day in the look. It didn't look like this Down syndrome person. It was a devil, a demon. That's how drastically the face changed. And with this yell, this roar, but now, as I stated, Cindy falls off the boat, and I'm going to, now I know I've got to move to my right to get her in, but I'm fixated at this thing on shore. But now, you guys, when I got hit with that blast, all of a sudden I've seen a different, like a filter. Now the, the, the green of the forest is dull. The water is dull. The sky is dull. The color of this beast is you know, the, the reddish brown hair is kind of like matted. It is almost like black and white, but not quite black and white. It was kind of fuzzy, fuzzy looking now at this point. But you guys, I was so scared because she's in the water. I don't know what this thing is, and I can't move. I'm like paralyzed. Now, this seems like time stopped. It seems like this whole encounter is lasting hours. It probably was under 15 seconds in total, to be honest. So I'm trying in my mind, Rob, you got to move. Get your feet. You got to move. You got to move. Get Cindy. I break free of whatever trance I'm in. Color, I can now see in color vividly. Now I have my bearings. I get over. I lift her. She's trying to get in. I help her back into the boat. She's petrified, crying. The most scared I was, man, is when I looked to that shoreline. And this thing's gone. And I'm like, what in the hell? Now, I don't know. Is this thing swimming? Is it underwater? Is it going to come up and capsize the boat? I mean, it very easily, in my mind, this thing is so huge, man. It, 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 where is it? So I'm, 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 just, you know, I'm just running about the boat, trying to get it restarted. I mean, the engine, the, you know, the trolling motor went out. I'm trying to get it all together, get it running, finally get it running. She's yelling, get out of here, get out of here. I know, I'm calm down, baby, calm down. Get it started. I zip, man, from Lake Mitchell. I zip all the way across the lake. I zip through the canal, cross through the canal, get out of Lake Cadillac. I beeline toward where I launched the boat. I get to the launch of the boat, the docking area, tie it up. Get take care. If she's shivering, I put a blanket or found a like a beach towel or something, whatever the heck it was. Wrap her up, get her out of the boat. I'm looking for something. What I'm looking for, I don't even know. But then I happen to see a bar or restaurant. I said, let's go in this place. Let's go in here. Thank God it wasn't really busy, even though it was after lunchtime at this point. But there was not a lot of people in there. We found a a corner booth. In the far, far left corner, I walked in the front door, I looked to my left, there's a corner, boom, there's no one there, way in the back. Cindy sits down, I sit down opposite, we're opposite sides of each other. And our maid comes up, and now, now you guys, Cindy doesn't drink. And she goes, what can I get you? First thing she says, I want a Bud Light bottle and a shot of Jack Daniels. And I says to the bar maid, I said, I'll have the same, but make mine a double. She takes that shot, drinks it back, washes it down with some beer like a champ, like a professional, like she's like I've been a drinker for 30 years or whatever. I do the same. She goes, honey, what do you think that was? I said, well, I was going to ask you the same thing. What do you think, son? Oh, man, I, Roddy, I, I think it was that Bigfoot creature. I said, you know what? That's kind of what I thought. But I hesitated because I remember Bigfoot from Patterson Gimlin 
And as a kid, I might have seen a picture in a library book because I will, going way back as a kid, you guys, I was into monsters and stuff and I knew about Bigfoot. I knew about, you know, I, I grew up watching like, uh, Bella Lugosi, Lon Chaney, all those movies. So I was, I was actually into monsters as a kid and I saw the Leonard Nimoy, uh, in search of, so I knew about Bigfoot. I wasn't a novice, but I wasn't invested into it. It was something that if there was a show on TV about it, I would always watch it. But other than that, that, that was the extent of my interest. I said, yeah, I think it was Superman. I remember watching some Bigfoot shows and they, they don't really look like what I saw. So she goes, should we go call the DNR, call the police? I'm thinking, well, I'm not calling the police, and I certainly don't want to get involved with the DNR. Number one, we're out of towners. Now we're sitting in a bar drinking. I don't think it's a good look. And quite frankly, I don't think anybody would believe this story anyway. Yeah, you're probably right, Rob, she says. So we didn't even, and you know, we had like two days left on this trip, and we didn't even ask each other about, should we stay? We, we kind of, you know, read each other's minds and we just went back to our little place we were staying at, packed up our gear. We got in the truck, drove home, got home, went straight into the computer, started pulling up stuff online. Um, and started researching. So, and then, of course, the story really gets terrible because the other date that I was telling you guys about was the encounter was June 15, 2018. Well, again, in 2018, but August 18th of 2018, which was uh, two months and three days later, Cindy's ma gives me a call and told me she passed away. Oh, wow. And, what? and you, well, well, she had a heart attack. That's what she told me. And I thought that was strange, you guys, because, you know, I could think about was getting hit with that sound, that blast. And I'm thinking she's such a little girl. Did her organs are shaken up? Did they get jog loose? That? Cindy, as I said, Cindy, the first time I saw her have a drink was with me in that bar. She wasn't a smoker or a drinker. I was a girl, and I think at the time she was 41, man. How do you die of a heart attack when you're healthy? Good shape, not overweight. To this day, I think that's a mystery, and the mom hasn't talked to me since because she blames that on me. I don't know if Cindy told her about the encounter. I certainly haven't because I don't have any... I tell my encounter freely today, but to tell her mom this story... Now, I don't know if she's heard it since I'm on broadcast. I don't know. I doubt it. But I couldn't tell her that, and she'd probably just think I'm some nutcase. She, she, she's blamed me on the death, and so I don't. And there's no way I can access to records, because I think there's something else going on with that. But I, again, four years ago, you guys, I mean, you're never, I mean, I, I, I've come, I've gotten closure today. The, the reason I, then I did that video, right, for the very first time, because I had to talk to somebody. I'll never forget the encounter. I have closure today. I, am I sad when I tell this story? Some days I am very sad. Like right now, I'm kind of sad. I almost had, I almost had a tear right there, and I haven't had a tear in about a couple of years. But there are those days, man, that I just wonder. So I was going to go back to Lake Cadillac with a bazooka, a shotgun, a bunch of buddies, and I was prepared to shoot up and blast up that entire area in hopes of killing this thing. Because I thought it was a devil. I owned a business after Cindy died six months. I owned a bar for 13 years. I just sold it in 2020. For six months, I didn't go to work. I told my my bar manager, his name is Rodney. Hey, brother, just take my money and put it in the bank. Don't rip me off. That's the last words I told that guy. I didn't talk to him for six months. Because I got in a deep place. Right. I said, I have weird thoughts. I thought I was going kind of crazy. Then I was just immersed in this big, I just kept doing all this. I started getting in touch now with Bigfoot people. 
made some calls. And I discovered that YouTube is an outlet. And then I, of course, that was a fiasco because half the people on YouTube were, I didn't like, and I thought they were full of crap. Then I met Tex. I met a couple other people, Duke Sullivan, another guy. I don't know if you know him. They helped me out. And they helped get me straightened out. But mentally, guys, I, I, I used to be ashamed to tell people this. I saw a mental death. I saw a, a, a psychology person because you guys, man, it was, it was terrible. I mean, you know, she died in two, two months after the sighting and, and I was crazy for like six months, not going to work. like at my own business that I almost pissed away. Yeah. And then I decided to do something about it eventually. Now this is what I do today, man. I, I listen to people's encounters. I mean, I tell everybody on the show, you need someone to listen to, you know, anonymously or privately. Call me. Do whatever. I'll help you. I'll help you get through it because that was afforded to me, and I'm glad that did because if I wasn't helped because you don't know where to go. You know, you don't know what someone's going to think about you. And today, it's not about being popular Everybody likes their views and likes to have their name be said on air. But you know what? I'm more about the friendships and the people that I've helped in these last, I started doing this a year and a half ago. I get a thrill out of that knowing that I helped somebody because I know if I wasn't helped, who knows where I'd be today. I might not even be here. So yeah, guys, that's, that's my encounter, man. That's why I do what I do today now. Let me ask you a question, Rob. Like when, when you, and, and so I guess just point blank, and in your honest opinion, do you think that this creature contributed to the death of your girlfriend? Let me just point blank. Point blank. If you asked me that question in 2018, my answer would have been yes. 2022, I'm 50 50 now, Josh, man. I mean, I'm thinking that that infrasound blast had it play a part in that. How can you explain a person perfectly healthy just died two months after getting hit with that? And you said her mother like blames you. Can you yeah. el- elaborate she, on that? Like, what? She never liked me. And I guess Cindy was telling her mom, yeah, he's taking me out to the lake, blah, blah, blah. I don't really want to do it, but you know what? I want to make this relationship work, this and that. And her mom, for whatever reason, didn't like me. And, and, um, that's just that's just the weird thing. She was very secretive. She never said hi to me. And mom never said hi to me. I was dating a girl for like three years, and we never did anything like this. And I said, look, you got to, you know, I'd like to take you out to the, to the woods and do something. If you're going with the weekends with the boys, I mean, I want my girl, you know, if you don't like it after one time, then fine. Let's try it at least once. But her mom was very cold to me. Whatever he's out, I'm a pretty cool dude. I don't, I have no idea. But her mom, I said, I said, well, how she died? She goes, I don't know. She, the doctor says she had a heart attack. I said, well, you get an autopsy or something? She said, well, oh, Rob, you know what? I don't want to talk to you about Cindy. As far as I'm concerned, you shouldn't have taken her into the woods, which wasn't really in the woods. It was at a lake, for one. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you guys did up there. I said, well, you didn't do anything. So... That's kind of a bit of a mystery why she didn't like me, why she blamed me. She remember, I remember telling me that. You know, you never should have taken her. So she didn't really say, Rob, I blame you for her death, but I got it. Like, I construed it that way when she says, you never should have taken her. She didn't want to go in the first place. If you wouldn't have taken her, she'd probably be here. So I don't know. So maybe she knows something I don't know. I don't know. But heart attack, hey. It's that, that, now, right now, burn. I'm, I'm really, now I'm getting ticked off now because... Yeah, thinking about that woman and why she's just so was just so just like off offset or whatever you want to call it, whatever the verb is. I don't know why she don't like me. And so the I guess okay, the interesting thing to me is how this creature that you saw <clears throat> it went from looking like almost like a like a a man-like creature to something that looked almost demonic. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. I mean, that's how we always describe it from the initial encounter. It looked like a devil. Now, four years later, doing a lot of research and looking at a lot of pictures of different animals, 
you know, there's like a lot of apes, particularly like your orangutan, right? Not the orangutan. What's the um, baboon? You ever see a baboon, how it has the, that, first of all, the face is crazy look to begin with, but how when it gets mad and it yells, how everything gets really tight on his face and all the teeth are exposed. Mm-hmm. And it totally metamorphosizes. It looks way different. Now I'm thinking maybe that's what this thing did. Because I don't think, today, Josh, I don't think it was a demon, right? 2018, that's what I called it. You know, so it's, even to this day, I have a hard time grasping what exactly it is, what I saw. I'm saying Bigfoot, and what my explanation today is when it just exposed, dropped that jaw, and when it, it tightened up, Kind of like a lot of other animals that can metamorphosize. You know, I would even do dumb things like I go in the mirror, right? And I would try to make my face look different, right? Which, you know, sounds kind of crazy, but, you know, it's funny what you can do, how you can contort your own personal face to look not even like yourself. So that's today what I tend to believe in. And I guess other people have kind of swayed to me that, yeah, it wasn't, you know, a demon. I think it was more of a flesh and blood thing. But am I convinced 100% it was a Bigfoot? No. Oh, it's still up in the air on that one. So you don't even you don't even think that this thing may have... You, you're thinking it might not have even been a Sasquatch. <laughs> well, of all the things that I've looked into, I've never seen that happen. Or not that we've seen good videos or heard people... I mean, this is the only story... You know how a lot of people have Bigfoot cross the road stories or they've got the Bigfoot looks like the friendly forest giant and mm-hmm. has that look about him. There's yet, uh, I've yet to talk to one person that's, that has had the same experience as me with the, with the, the contorting of the face and just totally looking like night and day. And most people's, a lot of people's stories are all very common. They have a lot of commonalities to them. Mm-hmm. This one here, man, is kind of, it's different. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, it's, it's got that different, that different vibe, that different look. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people too, that do this, that are involved in the, the, the Bigfoot stories and, and, you know, they, they tend to try to stay away from encounters that will, that, that are, that are demonic sounding, you know what I mean? Like, like, I mean, like yeah. I've, I've done a deep dive on the Genosqua and the Gugwe, and these are two very highly aggressive Sasquatch creatures, you know, but when you deal with the, the bulk of the researchers out there, they, they tend to try to say that they're this, like you said, like there's this sort of friendly force giant and, and there's always this, this, uh, well, if they wanted to hurt you, they would, you know, and they just walk off into the woods and want to be left alone. Um, but I can tell you right now that that is maybe the majority of the cases, but there are a lot of cases where these things are highly aggressive and do a lot of nasty things, but those tend to not get as much press. Um, and I, and it's almost like the community as a whole, and I'm not going to try to, you know, this is an indictment on the community. What I'm saying is it seems like the Bigfoot community and the Dogman community does the same thing. They, they tend to they try to sugarcoat what these things do and, and act like, you know, if you had this sort of an encounter, well, you're the oddball, you're the weird one, because a lot of people had encounters and they, you know, nothing happened to them. But by the same token, there are a lot of missing people <laughs> in regions where Dogman and Bigfoot exist. And I can tell you right now, I have heard a ton of stories of these things doing really nasty things. Like there was a guy that I, I told his story on my show. I'm still in contact with him to this day. And he told me, he was like, people didn't take me seriously. He was reading a gas, a gas meter up there in Washington. And this thing chased him down. And it was right outside of Spokane and it chased him down into the, onto the highway. And he had to flag down a, a policeman, you know, and he's a, he's an African American guy. And he was like, dude, I'm a, I'm a large, African-American guy jogging down the road, trying to wave people down. And they're like, nobody's going to stop and go, you know, I'm going to give this guy a ride. He's like, luckily a cop pulled over and was like, what the heck, you know, why, why is this guy acting crazy and hysterical? And when this thing came up to the tree line and this, this officer saw it, then the, he was like, Oh, you know, he jumped in his vehicle 
and they took off together and he was like, what was that? He goes, I don't know. It just chased me, knocked over my truck. His truck was one of those small uh, little trucks, you know? Um, and he said, dude, it knocked over my work truck and, and, you know, it chased me off the road, off the road out in the middle of the, the woods, you know? Um, and then another story I got where one of these things picked up a rock and threw it at this child and it embedded into the tree and and the guy was sitting there like, whoa, you know, and now somebody tried to analyze that one and say, oh, well, that was because the father and son were playing catch and Bigfoot wanted to play you know, with them too. So he threw a rock. I was like, oh yeah, two inches from a child's head that he threw a rock and yeah, yeah friendly Bigfoot. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm really having a hard time. You know, I'm not saying that they are all assassins and that they're out there like ninjas waiting to kill us, but I, I just really don't believe in this. They're just a bunch of friendly forest giant creatures. And, and I, you know, another guy in Alaska uh, was pulled out of his sleeping bag and thrown down into a, not a ravine, but like, you know, he, he almost slipped into a ravine because one of these friendly forest giants decided to 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 mess with him, you know. And so you get these reports. And of course, you know, some of them end up on TV and they're sensationalized and they'll even change things around and make it all whatever to make it more sensational. But the fact of the matter is it does happen. And these, there are, there are reports. We all know the stories of cat people's cabins being assaulted, people shooting at these things and these things doing horrible, horrible things. Um, a guy that was, uh, in Oregon right there, in, uh, asleep near the Columbia river. He wakes up and I have actually been to that spot. I went there on a road trip, you know? And so I stopped at several of these hot spots. 90% of them were Bigfoot. Uh, maybe, maybe 80% of them, the other 20% were Dogman. And we stopped at several different spots and we, you know, we kind of did a little investigating and looked and kind of reenacted it. Well, there's a rest stop right there. I think it's near the Dalles, if I'm correct. And this guy was face palmed and pulled out of his truck and his, his, this thing was going to kill him. And luckily he was able to, to, to fight it off and get, you know, it, get, get loose from it only because of the weird angle that, that this thing had. It didn't have a good angle, you know, to pull him out of his truck. And he, he was, he was able to get away. Uh, another guy was like, you know, up in Washington, same thing. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, not in Washington, up in Ontario, and the same thing happened. He got out, he, t t t he was urinating, and this thing came around the side and swung a huge, what he described as a tree. And I said, oh, it swung a stick. You no, know, it wasn't a stick. It was a tree. Like this thing swung yeah. a tree, <laughs> smashed the front of my Peterbilt truck, and I jumped back in the truck, and it threw it at my truck. And just it went over the top of the truck. Luckily, it didn't hit the windshield because it probably would have impaled me. Um, so these aren't, you know, they're not just friendly forest giants. You know, these things do, uh, hurt people. They do, you know, and people always, you know, I was looking at it earlier. There's a group on, on Facebook and they're talking about dog man and Bigfoot and, and, oh, they won't hurt you if you don't hurt them. Uh, they just want to scare you and, and get you to go away from them. Well, if that's the case, then why do they chase people? If that's the case, then why do so many people go missing in their territories? You know, if that's, if that's oh, the yeah. truth. Absolutely. You know, being that, you know, I've been doing this a while and, and I get all these stories too. And, and people email me stuff and, you know, the people that I've had on the show. And I got to tell you something. One thing that, yes, I know that I do not agree with the friendly forest giant theory. Number one, for what happened to me. But number two, how naive are you? This is something we know nothing about. I mean, we, you know, people that have been researching for 40 years don't even know what they're all about, what they're capable of. I think we all know what they're capable of simply by the sheer size, but I tell you what, I don't trust them. And being it kind of usually irritates me sometimes, just like what you were mentioning, Josh, these people, I'll see people like in chat rooms, you know, you shouldn't be talking about Bigfoot. They're, they're an ancient people. They, are friendly, you know, they're a hybrid humanoid, you know, they want nothing to do with us. You know, I tell you what, I'm not going to want to take my kid or wife, if I, if I had them, into the woods if these things are around. Like these people that say, you know, the people that, that they gift them, they have their gifting spots. Well, guess what happens when you gift a Bigfoot or any cryptid and then you stop? 
You've heard the stories. Yeah, it was that my gift to so stop giving the guy peanut, this big foot creature peanut butter. But all of a sudden, he's tearing my house apart. He's ripping the shingles off my roof, you know, going bonkers. You know, people don't like to hear those stories. I got an encounter story, which I, I put out on uh, my show a couple days ago. A guy emails me. He was, this is actually in the state of Michigan. They're fishing. They're out there at the Raisin River. We call it the River Raisin here. And so, you know, he was going down in his canoe. This was in 2014 or something, I think it was. I forget, I think 2012. Saw this, like, it, just, it stopped in the water. He did, and, he, and, it, and, it, and it, the rapids were kind of picking up. And he's like, man, I, I can't avoid this thing. It's kind of massive. So he's coming up on it, and all of a sudden, this stump, which he thought was a stump, it was like black fur, or black fur, it looked like black. I say fur now because I know what this thing was. Then it kind of submerged. So right when it submerges, he gets over the top of it, and all of a sudden, this thing stands up with the canoe, and he and lifts up this canoe, this is what this guy's telling me, up out of the water, up out of the canoe, these guys are what they once they got their bearings together, they're in like waist high water, they're looking around, look, what the hell would we just hit? And they seen he talked about the twig. Well this thing was walking out and they seen the backside of it only, but they said at first they thought it was a bear and they said, Man, the buddy says bears don't walk on two legs, at least not that nimble, not through this water. Plus they can't hold a 30-inch fish in her left hand, and he says the word hand and walk up a hill like that. <laughs> you know? This is a story that guy sent me. Hey, whether it's true or not, hey, you know what? I aired it because I'm not going to call out anybody as BS because, you know what? I believe all the stories because what happened to me, it happened to me, and your story is just as good as mine or just as credit, credible. Now, if you're to say that, you know, Sasquatch came over and got your wife's bad and had a kid, well, you you know, get, get lost. <laughs> yeah, I've, you know? I've heard some real whoppers like that, you know, that when they start talking yeah, about yeah. that part, it's like, look, whether you're telling yeah, the truth on. or not, I'm not interested in the, uh, yeah. the stories yeah, of no. Coitus. So I'm, and, uh, yeah, I'm sitting there having coffee with Sasquatch one morning, reading the paper. Mm. You know, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can tell you this. Well, I'll tell you, personally, I've had no experience with the friendly force giant type Bigfoot. Sure you have, Barton. All my experiences, no, all my experiences (laughs) have been extremely frightening and uh, just just something that no one would ever want to have happen to them. These things killed all of our animals back in Spotsville in 1975 and really just terrorized our family for 11 months until we finally moved out of of the house. And so, but I've, I've taken... Scores and scores of interviews from people that uh, describe these things as looking demonic or pure evil or like a devil. So, well, see, you're the first person that told me that. Thank you for that because, you know, I, I know that's what it looked like. You're man. welcome. Yeah, oh, pure thanks. evil. I, I hear that over and over again from, from people in Kentucky, especially. And it's so, I, you know, I just have to. I'm not going to call anybody out for, you know, telling BS stories either because my yeah. stories are probably a lot more fantastic than that. But I just have no no faith in, in the, the theory that these things are, are nice and friendly to anyone. I mean, from what, I, from what I've experienced myself, they're, they're not. They're totally the opposite. And if they didn't want to be seen, then they would not be seen. It's very simple. So I lived in, in the river bottoms of Kentucky, and it's hundreds of miles of uh, woods and sloughs and swamps and fields and trees. And, you know, if they didn't want to be seen, they just go down where, where nobody was at, but no, in, instead they came to our house almost nightly, uh, to terrorize my brothers and sisters and I, and even my, my parents. So uh, I don't believe that they're shy and retiring as everybody claims and, or they're, well, you know, they're, they're really intelligent. So you have to ask yourself, while most of the sightings are of of people who are riding down a dark country road at night and these things just walk out in front of their car, right? That's the bulk of Bigfoot sightings right there. But why would they do that if they're so intelligent? Why would why why not wait just a couple of seconds up in the tree line until the car is passed and then cross the road once the car is gone, right? They don't do that. 
they almost yes. always choose to walk in front of the car where they can be seen. And there's there's so much uh, dense forest in Kentucky that I don't think any man has ever stepped foot in, even back to the Daniel Boone days and all that. that they could, these things could go in, there, go in there by the thousands and never be seen or heard by anyone, but they don't. They stay at the periphery of civilization, the outskirts of civilization. You know, people see them eating out of dumpsters and all kinds of crazy stuff. And they look in windows, you know. That's not the actions of, of a creature that does not want to be seen. No, absolutely not. And you're right, especially uh, looking through your window. I mean, they're, they're, up, they're just creepy. I mean, if they're good, if they're what they're supposed to, what people believe to be, as you said, they will not, they can stay hidden. They should never be seen unless crossing a road, like you said, late at night. And they get, you know, and it's, and it's bad luck for them, right? Because they, I got in an argument with somebody who was trying to tell me when I told them this story. It was a group of people. It was like me against like three people. They're like, and I'm telling them, Bigfoot, what I seen was, they're trying to tell me Bigfoot's good, not bad, no bad Bigfoot, right? And so why in the hell in the middle of the day with this thing, and I'm minding my own damn business, just fishing with some with my girl, why would this thing go out of its way to yell at me, show intimidation at me, yell at me, throw out that infrasound, if that's what you want to call it at me, they don't want to be seen. That, that thing was up to no good. And somebody had the audacity to tell me, you're probably in a fishing hole. Thought he was being funny. And I'm like, that is not, are you, are you joking right now? Mad at me? A guy that he, this thing could have snapped in two, let alone the small girl? They're showing aggression at me? Because I'm, I'm in a fishing area? Things nine foot tall? Probably another four and a half foot wide? Well, all you got to do is. Hey, you know, you got, oh, go ahead, Rom. No, it's like that's not okay. If you want to call that non-typical Bigfoot behavior, which everybody is conditioned that, as we're talking about, their people are conditioned that they're nice. This was totally uh, <laughs> not nice. It, it, it had no business doing what it was doing. If you ask me, yeah. why it did that? It, it wanted to start a fight. Yeah, I, I was going to say, you know, there were some ranchers out in their town near Giddings. <clears throat> it wasn't in Giddings, in, but it was outside of it. it, was the closest town. And they had, you know, predation that was going on on their livestock. And these things were, were not even eating the animals they were killing. Now, I had somebody argue that, well, coyotes will do that too if they get, or wild dogs, whatever. But at one point, you know, the guy's niece and his nephew were outside when they were kids, and this thing walked up with their family dog, was hold was was holding it by its throat and just dropped it right there in the yard. You know, well, what would have been the the edge of the yard? It was like it's really because it was like a huge. It wasn't really like a yard. It was like the, the it was about thirty forty yards away. That was the the edge of where their the tree line was. And they yeah. had a hound dog and it killed it just to, just to kill it. Like it took it and killed it. And the next day came out there and dropped it and let it, you know, whatever. And then they found a coyote that was just completely strung out along a barbed wire fence. And it was put there and, and killed in that manner by this, these, these Sasquatch to, to terrorize the family that, you know, they terrorize these people and I'm telling you right now, I, I, I got two two stories on my show. It's Big Besieged by Bigfoot and uh, Stalked by Sasquatch. I think those are the names of them. Um, my nephew, usually him and my godson, they name them. But I believe those were the two. And one of them was a, an ancestral story that I had gotten from my great, great uncles and, and who had told me these stories that had happened to a family back at the turn of the century. Um, you know, it, it, it was crazy. I mean... These things, they, they were, they were, it looked evil. They, they were like troglodytes. They smelled like death and they dug up the dead body of a cholera, uh, uh, survivor of a cholera, uh, uh, victim. And the survivors, you know, were, were upset because it was a family member. They dug him up and they took a shot at him, you know, to get him away from it. And these things just went ballistic on them and started like attacking them and they and they terrorized that family until they were forced to relocate 
And, you know, another story I got, this guy was driving near Marble Falls in between uh, Austin and Marble Falls, and a, a big, nice rock just came flying through his window of his truck. It was late at night. It was about, it was about 11, 30, 12 at night. And uh, he was coming back from a baseball tournament with his two sons, and they look over and they see this thing coming up out of a creek, and I know exactly where that's at. And there's like a little bridge right there. And this thing had red glowing eyes and it just roared and they could just, I mean, it was like so bad. The roar was so bad that it shook the, like the, the, the truck's dash. Like they could feel it as they were driving by. They weren't bothering anybody. They were just driving by like what, you know, if these things are so calm and peaceful and good natured and whatever, um, what was the purpose of throwing that rock through the window and terrorizing their children and hurting their ears and making them cry, you know, and, and what was the purpose of that? I mean, there, there is no other purpose than to terror. They're terrorizing. And so, you know, you get these people that like this, on well, this very large show that everybody watches, um, finding these things, whatever. And one of them told one of the witnesses on, that came on my show, I think it was on Washington. It was on the show about Washington weirdness or whatever, the state of Washington, and told one of these uh, ladies that that her grandson was perfectly safe, playing down by a creek, you know, give them apples or whatever, you know, let's feed them some donuts, or, you know, like what is this? I mean, uh, this is ridiculous, dude. And I'm sorry, I'll call oh, BS oh, where, I, where I, I see it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's just totally ridiculous. And you mentioned about the dogs, you know, back. Uh, in 1975, these creatures must have killed every dog within a half mile of our farm because they would bring the carcasses and drop them into our fields and in our, in our yard. And each, all the carcasses, you know, were all mutilated the same way. They were uh, sliced down the, the middle, uh, from the throats to their stomachs. All their entrails and soft organs were removed, their eyeballs, their tongues. They were all missing. Uh, there was no blood anywhere around. And no scavenger would eat these carcasses. A fly wouldn't even land on them. So, you know, that kind of tells me that, uh, that, that, that they were probably radioactive to some degree. And which could be that Bigfoot is, is as well. I mean, I don't know. You know, we have a bunch of alien, uh, cattle mutilations uh, going on and, uh, and all the mutilations are pretty much the same and people would as ascribe it to, uh, the UFO phenomenon, which it might be Bigfoot because that's what happened to us. And, you know, there's no denying the truth. If, if you live this through this, like Rob and you, Josh, when you live through an inhumanoid sighting, there's, there's really no going back from that point. And yeah, you can't really, right. yeah. you know, you can't really yeah. explain it in a physical, biological way. Some of the things that these things can do. And I've seen it myself. And people think I'm probably crazy, but I'm not. I'm just a regular guy. But I know for a fact, and I don't care how stupid this makes me sound to anyone, I know for a fact these things can cloak and become invisible to the naked human eye. It's happened to me twice. So, you know, that's, uh, that's a bone of contention with the apers, as we like to call them, Josh. You know, they, they believe these things are just uh, undiscovered monkeys. Well, you know, uh, what you just totally, called them in human totally romantic and ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, what you just right. said, um, that's a very good, uh, the, the, the word you use, inhumanoids, like your book, Inhumanoids. And I've said this many times, your book yeah. was one of the best. And, and it, because when I saw, when I was 15, people were like, oh yeah, it's a cryptid, this and that. Well, it's not really a cryptid. And I can tell you right no. now, Dogman is not some undiscovered species because that thing did not look like any animal I've ever seen. And then I've had idiots actually argue with me and tell me, Oh, well, it wasn't going to hurt you. And I'm like, dude, okay, I was there. Don't try to tell me what I saw and what I didn't <laughs> saw right. and what I didn't see. You know, and when I talked to Linda, you know, Linda, eventually she wrote a book said, saying, you know, it was called, I know what I saw. And I remember, you know, talking to her and she said, so many people are afraid to come forward because there's this whole narrative that they want to spend that, <clears throat> oh, well, they won't hurt you. That's not true. That is absolutely not true. That thing had an eight foot fence in front of me and I had somebody at another show that I was on said, well, it was judging the fence. It would have just jumped with their ability to leap. It would have just jumped over an H if it wanted to. 
Well, I think it was planning on it, but my friend's dad came out of the house and yelled and I ran up, you know, to, I wobbled over there to that part of the fence. And then I ran just that the last short distance I ran to him and got inside the house because I really fully believe to this day, which is now, I guess what, 31 years later, I still believe that this thing was going to kill me. It was going to eat me. And my friend that was there with me, he's a preacher now in my hometown and he, he makes no bones about it. He thinks that we saw something evil, and I don't care how many people try to tell me that these things won't hurt you. That the that is not the case because that's not what I'm getting. I get a lot of stories that that were, yeah, the the, the, the people don't get hurt, but they're not in a position for the for them to get hurt. But when they are in a position for them to get hurt, things happen. I mean, they they chase people, they do all kinds of horrible things. Um, yeah. And, and I think maybe sometimes they're not hungry or they're not looking to whatever. They're just there maybe every once in a while, but they do do things that are absolutely a thousand percent malicious. And it doesn't even surprise me what happened to you, Rob, that your, your, your girlfriend and God rest her soul. It's horrible. What happened? Yeah. And, and but don't ever I think for a second that when you doubt yourself, I wouldn't be doubting myself and don't doubt what you saw because you know what you saw and and yeah. everybody else can go to hell with all this nonsense about well that doesn't that's not a bigfoot because it was it, it was bad so if it was bad you know bigfoot can't be bad you know and it's like bullshit. No. okay folks so that's going to do it for this episode uh, tune into the next episode where i return with my guest and with barton nunley And thank you for listening to PRT. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Good night.